It seems Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki might be at the losing end of the tussle taking place in the Edo State of the All Progressive Congress as he gets, as he gets disqualified from participating in the APC primary election. And it's another June 12, and this time we ask, what lessons have we learned from this historical day? This is Plus Politics, and I am Coyote Ladendi. Call it history, you may be right. Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki has been disqualified from participating in the primary election of the All Progressives Congress APC for the forthcoming governorship election in the state. It was declared unfit to contest in the exercise to choose the APC flag bearer along with two others by the party's screening committee. Also disqualified were Matthew Idonier and Ogewoye. The Professor Ayuba Jonathan led panel, however, cleared Osaru Obaze, Pastor Osage Izeyamu, and Dr. Pius Odubu to vie in the primary's election. Joining us to discuss this is Amadine Uyi, R Plus TV correspondent via Skype. And also we have. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, and we also have Liberos Oshoma, a very good friend of the house, a legal practitioner, joining us via Skype. Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, yeah. Kayade. Kayade. Yeah, let me let me talk yeah, to you. That, that name, sorry, that name is pronounced Idoriyekwe. Idoriyekwe. Okay, that's the son of the soil. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let, let me start with uh, Amadine, who has been there. He's been monitoring the whole exercise, even from when the governor said uh, he wasn't expecting anything from the... Uh, uh, the screening exercise. Amadine, bring us up to speed. What exactly are the reasons adduced by the screening committee? Okay, let's uh, first, uh, just like you said, start from uh, the point where the governor was screened. That was almost two days ago, where he came out and spoke to the press that as long as the national chairman is a concerned party, he does not think he will start. He will get justice. Two days later, the committee has come up, giving reasons uh, for his disqualification. But I would say I would like to look at it from a perspective of let's look at how credit worthy are the reasons, considering the fact that the All Progressives Congress has come out of a general election. They've come out of a Bayelsa staggered election where they had a candidate that won the election. And after winning the election, the Supreme Court came out in their own wisdom as the final arbiter and said, this is your candidate. He had a deputy who's, who had discrepancies in his name, in his certificates. Thereby, we are taking the election from you and giving it to the uh, rival People's Democratic Party. Now, all this, if we look at all this uh, from perspective and now go into the issue in Edo State, we know the governor has had a long-running battle with the national chairman. But the question is, as the uh, screening committee submitted their report today, the national chairman told them, say, read your report, because I don't want this uh, to be linked to me. And then they began to read about the candidates that got disqualified, the, citing the Bayesa example. They talked about engineer Chris Ogeuni, who was a former minister of works and housing, and he had discrepancies. They said he's, uh, he, he stands disqualified. They talked about the former deputy governor, Pius Udubu, who almost had a one or two discrepancies, but his saving grace was that his own father has sworn an affidavit saying this is his real name, and they now got to the uh, national to the current governor of Edo State, 
uh, uh, Godwin Obaseki, and they began to reel out his credentials. They said, okay, he attended uh, the College of Education, and uh, he, he, based on the certificates uh, presented, he said he attended it, but he did not really give us anything tangible. He, he said he had O-level, he did not submit the O-level certificate uh, to uh, the party, uh, and then they talked about his NYSC certificate, which they said, yes, it might be a valid reason, from, it might be a valid mistake from the National Youth Service Corps. His name, which is Obaseki, which is spelled as O-B-A-S-E-K-I. On the certificate, it was spelled as Obasek, O-B-A-S-E-K. And they cited the same example, the same reason in Bielsa, where the aspirant had changed, uh, changes of names in different certificates which were submitted. And therefore, they said that these reasons, with one other very important reason, considering the fact that he took the party okay, in the Amadine. state, uh, the party to court, he stands, they would not uh, okay. clear him. I, I, I think, uh, thank you for that foundation you've just laid. And uh, let me go straight to uh, Liberals. Liberals, I'm fully aware that you've been monitoring this exercise. Is this a case of wanting to kill a dog and giving it a bad name, or these concerns are really genuine? Um, thank you, uh, Kayode. Uh, like we say, those who live in glass house uh, don't throw stones. And um, the governor actually knew he, he was living in glass house, and that so he started throwing stones. And um, that also, you know, gave um, the, the other side the opportunity to look deeply into, you know, his glass house, uh, figuratively speaking. And then also... Um, the qualification for being a governor is primary school certificates, the school certs. I had expected, knowing fully well that um, the minimum qualification is school certs, and um, you also remember that um, in the 2016 election, PDP during the campaign did raise the issue of uh, the qualification and the certificates of uh, the current governor of Basaki. But because um, they were all together at that time, the matter was swept, swept under the carpet. And that so, at this time, definitely was going to be a campaign material and a campaign tool in the hands of the opposition. And also, knowing fully well that he was already an opposition within his party, or you say he had opposition within his party, that there, there was no way they were not going to look into those uh, discrepancies. And I also do not think that there was any way they were going to sweep those uh, issues under the carpet, considering also the fact that uh, the party suffered the major defeat in Baeza, and almost everybody blamed the national chairman for that defeat in Baeza in the uh, the in the Supreme at the Supreme Court. That uh, the party ought to have screened the candidates and their credentials, and that why didn't the party screen the credentials of uh, the candidate? And so, knowing fully well that um, these issues were on the top burner. Um, it was very obvious that the governor, whose um, credentials also were not too straight, was going to face the call, was going to go through the eye of this. Um, it wasn't difficult for the screening uh, committee to look at this and conspicuously cite the issue of uh, bias. At the moment the national chairman raised the issue of bias, even before the screening committee was... Um, was uh, formed, I knew that there was a problem for Obaseki because I knew the issue of his certifications uh, came up during the 2016 election. And it consistently had been an issue uh, that um, he, the fact at the point they called him the affidavit governor, you know, and, and so the APC, no matter how we look at it, justifiably would say that uh, they don't want to, even though there are undercurrents that we all know, would say that they don't want a repeat of the bias issue. If the reverse were the case, or if, you know, um, uh, there was um, unity and harmony within the party, I think uh, they, what, they ought to, what they would have done would have been just to use um, his CUSAT certificate, you know, uh, as uh, the basic qualification. But the governor also played into their hands by submitting all his certificates. I, I wonder who, is he, who, is he, who was he trying to impress that he went to school, you know? So 
You, he, all, all, all he needed to have done was his school living certificate. There was no need for okay, all of those liberals, plenty certificates when you didn't have I, the original. I, 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 and, and so that I, was his I'm speaking process. from the angle of knowledge now, and I want to be corrected if I'm wrong. I, I know Obazeki's classmate who went to UI with him, who studied classics. And I'm asking yeah. that the same thing that he used four years ago, what has changed? Is it about the fact that you are living in a gas, glass house, you should not throw stones, or somebody is just out to get him out of the way and not citing by a no, example? Uh, four, years, four, years, four years ago, that's why I told you that if... Um, if Bayasa were not in the picture, uh, or if the entire uh, uh, political structures were, un were united, they probably won't be talking about certificate. All they would have done would have been to tender his school certificate. They won't be bothering about his classic certificate in UI and all of you is a uh, Institute of Continuing Education certificate. All he would have done would be submit his school living certificate, which is the requirement for contesting for governor. But the moment he knew, that's why I cited the case of living in a glass house. The moment he knew that he had those issues, nobody is saying, even the deputy governor in Bayasa, he had classmates also. And also, if you remember 2016, there was no Supreme Court decision in Bayasa. So the party, like I said, can hide under any justifiable reason, provided that the Supreme Court had given them that reason with what happened in Bayasa. Okay. And so the, the party will simply say, well, in 2016, when he contested, just the same way the Bayesa issue happened, we overlooked most of these things. But now we no longer want to okay. overlook, even though they're... I'll, they're I'll come back to you, so that Liberos. that's why I had expected him to be wiser than that. I, I, I'll come back to you. Uh, we'll still look at this issue raised. Uh, Amadine, um, maybe I should also put it on record that while Liberos is also a son of a do state, Amadine Uyi is also <laughs> maybe a high chief in a do state. And I'm sure you're in touch with what is happening over there. What's the post like in a Doe state? Is it about these certificates? Because I remember very well covering election in a Doe state when the same Oshomole, uh, the issue of certificate was almost an issue with him. But that didn't fly. But like Liberal said, maybe things have changed. What is the feeler that you're getting in a Doe state? Are people seeing it from APC being careful or they are seeing two elephants fighting? You know, you know, Kyle, they just like exactly the analogy uh, Liberals has given. Uh, yes, you might see it as uh, the witch flied over the house and the <laughs> child died in the morning. Therefore, the witch should be held responsible. But the truth about the matter is that if you were a member of the screening committee and you are just coming from losing an election in Bayelsa, not because you did not get the majority of votes, but because the Supreme Court said that your candidate probably had discrepancies in his name discrepancies in his certificate. The question is, I do not think you will, will uh, give Governor Baseki a pass back. Because whether we like it or not, Bayelsa has set a precedence. Yes, the court does not listen to public uh, the court of law does not listen to the feelings of the public or what the court will look at facts. And there is already a judgment everybody can attest to. I spoke to one or two people, residents in Benin. I spoke to one or two people who are supporters of uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki. And to, for many of them, they believe that this is only the handwork of the national chairman. But the truth about the matter is, when the APC goes to an election, also remember that the national chairman has his own seat on fire. And there have been criticisms in the party just after the 2019. Okay, Amadine, I will come back to you. So back to you, Liberals. Uh, uh, this is just to re-echo what you said. But let's look at the implication of this action. The, the, do yeah. you foresee, Obaseki has come out to say that there's no need appealing these, and he has described it through his spokesman or through the Commissioner for Information that this is mockery of democracy. What do you think the governor is doing? Are you suspecting that he's going to another party? Yes, I think uh, this is a repeat of uh, the Ogumba 
uh, saga or episode in uh, Imo State, um, while um, the, the battle raves. At the end of the day, we saw how Rocha Sukorocha's son in law of AA, you know, now left APC and moved to AA or, or so. And so I think the governor might also, um, because he's hell bent on contesting the election, he has consistently and vociferously said that um, he deserves a second term and he must get it. And so, um, he, since his party has denied him, and you know, like for typical of our politicians, he will definitely want to move to another party. But he has also said in that statement where he admitted that he would not contest, he uh, would not appeal the decision, that uh, the party, his supporters should be calm and wait for, you know, his best directive. I also think that the governor was not smart enough to have uh, put his house in, house in order. Because uh, if you listen to the chairman of the screening committee, it's an NYC certificate that you got as far back as 1980-something one would have expected that by now he would have gone back to NYC to correct that anomaly. Considering what also happened to the former Minister of Finance, um, um, what's her name? And, 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 and Kenya Kenya Adios. Adios, you know, also considering uh, one also would have expected that you go to a seat of continued education or the Ministry of Education in Benin to not just get attestation of attendance. If you actually said you, you had a result from the school, knowing fully whether you are fighting a battle of your life, since you didn't just submit the school cert, you went ahead to, to, to attest to the fact that you had other certificate, one would have also expected that you put all the certificate in order, knowing fully whether that you are, you, are, you, are, you are against an uphill task. But to, you know, not prepared fully and then go to a committee where you know that almost the members were working against you and then give them opportunity to actually work against you, it becomes um, you know, an easy battle for them, citing reasons. They'll give valid reasons, even though those reasons, you know, you actually supply the reasons to them, even though they were prepared to disqualify you. Liberals. You also have made it very difficult for it, for, for it to happen. Liberals. But he didn't do that. Liberals, you recall how this drama uh, uh, happened when it was a case of UI coming out to say that this man graduated from us, you moved to the issue of NYC. It is obvious that they are going to come out with one reason or the other. So the question is, yes. is the screening committee fair? Are they really impartial in this case? Let, let's, let's look at it from this. Uh, I, I said something. You have a running battle with um, the national chairman of the party. The national chairman of the party, you know, is the head of the National Working Committee. He sets up a screening committee. And there are criteria for screening. What you do, you make it very difficult, almost an impossibility for the screening committee not to screen you out. The moment you give them any loophole, any reason to screen you out, they will do that. And he, that's what I'm saying. He gave them reasons to screen him out. You're talking about results. First and foremost, the requirement for contesting a governor is school sat. You are not impressing anybody by putting it there that you went to UI or you didn't go to UI. You have a school sat. Whether it's, whether it's three credits or two credits, it's immaterial. The Court of Appeal, including the Supreme Court, in the case of Adele K. Inoshu, had said that all the, 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 uh, 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 the constitution requires of you is a school sat. The constitutions didn't say that you must have credit. And leave. So what I expected the governor to do would have been just tender your school cert and leave the rest. Liberals. The school cert, it is not in doubt. It Liberals. It is not a question that you have a school cert. Liberals. I, I, like I told you, yes. if this man had even, you know, overcome that hurdle, there is every possibility that something else will come up. My question to you now is, what, 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 what about what, the leaders mm, of the party? Are they totally indifferent or they are already... Taking side with the national working yeah, uh, let me, uh, committee. No, not at all. Let, let me let me quickly let me let me quickly let me quickly also state. Let me put it on record that Obaseki also was the architect of his own misfortune. How the leaders of the party in the states campaigned for Obaseki vigorously in 2016. Obaseki got office in 2016 immediately after swearing in. Obaseki told the leaders that they were hungry. He told them that they had been squared by Oshomole. He went, Obaseki almost went against everything Oshomole stood for. And also, it was as if 
the Obaseki's government was inaugurated to outdo Oshomole. I did ask one question one day. I said, the more you criticize Oshomole, you, you, you are also criticizing yourself because you were the chief economic advisor of that government. And but he was excused away. So the moment he started doing that, he created a division for himself. Some of the party leaders in the state, just like Ambode in Lagos, felt disappointed and left. And so the moment they left, so that means Obaseki's trouble had begun in okay. the name. And if Obas Oshomole was not the national leader of the party, by now I would say Obaseki would have his way easily. But knowing fully whether you are fighting a battle of your life with the national chairman of your party, that you almost ousted with a court judgment last year in, uh, in, um, in Abuja. So it was easy. This year, this year. So it was easy for you would have been you would have put your house in order. Okay. And, and so I think that he wasn't prepared enough. And that's why the party leaders also probably would have folded their hands, you know, to Liberal. support their national chairman against the governor, who the Fed also had Okay, you know, the I'm the already getting the signal. Mind you, the last quickly, the last reason they gave was that he took the party to court. So this were the party activities in as far as you okay. know. Liberals, let me do you this favor. Uh, 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 if Amadin is here, probably he can also make his final submission. If you say that Obaseki is the architect of his own misfortune, what about a man who believes that it is bye-bye to Godfatherism and that same man is also doing this? Is he also setting an antecedent that might be a problem? Please, you have 30 seconds to do justice to this let, question. Let me... Let, let, let me quickly, uh, let me quickly uh, give you uh, the, the difference. Sorry, sorry quickly. Uh, for, for Oshomole during Adneni's time, Adneni was not his national leader. Adneni was in a different political party. Agreed. So it was easy for Oshomole to outrun Adneni in Benin. For Obaseki, and then secondly, it wasn't, the, the question is not about Godfatherism. The question is about how, how fair has the governor treated the party members. That's just what is at play here. If the governor had come and said, look, there's no more sharing of money. I want to concentrate on governors. And that means you are appealing. You are associating with the people through your good work. But okay. a situation where the people also see you, you have okay. a clique who also are sharing money with you. And they are not, they're not going to be happy. And okay. so people who felt short change, you know, are out there. And then people who they felt didn't work for the party, also are now the ones at the dime. Thank you very table. much. So that's Liberal. the issue. It's not if if he had played his game well, he probably would have been able to oust Oshomole. Okay, but thank you very much, Liberals. I uh, so much to say. Like I uh, like I uh, like I I suspected. Uh, Amadi, quickly, let me have your take. Liberals has become a prophet. He predicted this, and it has happened. What's your prediction? What do you think Obaseki would do? Do you think PDP is waiting to use him as their candidate, or? you see something else. Uh, one thing we must know is that the PDP is not a small party. It's not a mushroom party that uh, believes that without Obaseki, it cannot win an election. If you go back to elections in Edo State, you see that up to the time uh, the APC were able to muster their way to the government house. In fact, in Edo State, the PDP and APC shared the spoils almost equally. So even without an Obaseki, the PDP will still believe that they will go into that election and do their best. Okay. Remember that they have members from the Senate, Amadi. they have members from the House of Assembly, they have senators. In fact, they have representatives across all board. Apart from the local government chairman, which we know is usually choreographed and uh, designed by the sitting governor. <laughs> but I can tell you, that the PDP, they will, uh, they will be sitting down and savouring everything that is going on because it is in their interest that the APC should go into the ele elections divided. So they would not even want an Obaseki in their camp. They would prefer him to be in the APC camp okay. and continue to cause divisions. Thank you very much, Amadi. It's, well it's time. I, I, I can get your prediction clearly. I wish liberals will have time to talk about this. But thank you so much, Amadi Uyi, our senior editor with Plus TV. And thank you so much, liberals uh, Oshoma, 
for being with us. Um, and thank you for staying with us, our viewers. We'll take a short break. And when we return, it's time to talk about the lessons from the historical election that took place on June 12, 1993. It's up for discussion. We'll be right back.